Scales of Measurements. The purpose of this PowerPoint is to present information on the scales of measurements as they apply to research and data collection. Uses of levels, also known as the scales of measurement. The function of descriptive statistics is to summarize data. As you continue on through the Allied Health Program, you'll become more familiar with research, data collection, and accuracy of statistical testing. One of these areas important to understand is the scales of measurements. To determine which test of statistical significance is appropriate, we must first determine which sort of variable we are actually measuring. We have different tests for different levels of data. There are four levels of measurements that are used. They are nominal, ordinal, ratio, and interval. Categorical data is broken into two separate areas, nominal and ordinal. Categorical data is just what it sounds like. It's categories, placing data in categories. The first of the categorical data to look at is the nominal level data. Nominal level is data that contains words, not numbers. Some examples of words, not numbers, would be male, female, or black, white, when gathering information. The most common way to analyze nominal data is through percentages. A percentage indicates the number of participants per 100. For example, if a scientist was studying how many individuals out of a thousand had periodontal disease, and it was determined that 200 of the participants had periodontal disease, he could say that 20% of the subjects studied had periodontal disease. Easy way to look at the data collected that is on the nominal level. An example of a nominal question for the example of gathering nominal data, the questionnaire asks, are you a high school graduate? Yes or no? Are you a coffee drinker? Yes or no? Do you own a computer? Yes or no? What is your sex, male or female? So you can see the responses to these questions are quite simple answers. We cannot rank this data. This example question was retrieved from www.imagesfrompo.com400. The next area of categorical data is ordinal level. Within the ordinal level of data, we can now begin to rank the data. We can rank order from high to low. This type of categorical data provides limited information. For this reason, researchers do not like to use it as a measurement tool. An example I like to use for dental hygiene students is the severity of periodontal disease. If a patient has been diagnosed with periodontal disease, dentists and hygienists will classify the level of their disease as one, being mild, two being moderate, and three being severe. So you can see we can rank the disease, but once again, it does not allow us the knowledge of how mild is mild. We know moderate would be more than mild, but once again, it's difficult to de determine how much. The example that I have provided of an ordinal level measurement, the participants are asked to please state your opinion on the National Health Insurance Scale below. 
Then the participants are asked to rank how they feel about the survey in the category of interesting. Is it very much, somewhat, neither, somewhat, very much, all the way to boring? Next, the questionnaire asks the participant to check the box that applies to them in the category of, is it simple? Very much, somewhat, neither, somewhat, very much, all the way down to the category of complex. Next, the questionnaire asks the participant to check the box of un to check the box that applies to them in the category of uncaring. Very much, somewhat, neither, somewhat, very much, all the way to the category of caring. And in the last category, they're asked to rank, is it useful? Very much, somewhat, neither, somewhat, very much, or useless. Next, we can move on to continuous data. Continuous data is just what the word says it is, continuous. The first of two categories is ratio. Ratio has three distinctive characteristics. The first, how much of a characteristic the participant has. For example, if a researcher measures someone's height and it is determined that the person has 75 inches, then the researcher determines that the participant has 75 units called height. The second characteristic of ratio data is all units represent the same amount of that characteristic. For example, for each of the 75 inches that the participant has is the same amount of height as each inch. Another way to look at this is the difference between 60 and 61 inches is the same difference between 70 and 71 inches. The measurement is the same, although the numbers are not. The third characteristic of ratio is that there is an absolute zero. For example, on a yardstick, a researcher can deter determine an absolute zero. This is relevant because it would represent no height at all. Other examples would be someone's blood pressure, number of minutes until relief from a headache, 0 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Always remember ratio has an absolute 0. The last of the continuous data is interval level data. Interval level data can also be ranked. Interval level data also has three characteristics. The first, how much of a characteristic the participant has. For example, an individual taking a test, let's say in math, will earn a score. This score will be measuring the individual's knowledge. With this, there is a rank. The second characteristic of interval data is all units represent the same amount. It's a pretty sure bet that getting 9 out of 10 multiple choice questions right is about the same as getting 19 out of 20 right. Same unit of measurement. The third characteristic is there is no absolute zero. For example, students receiving a zero on a math test, although the student 
earns the zero, that doesn't mean that they know nothing about the topic. They could not, they maybe could not provide the responses expected by the questions asked, but they still have some knowledge about the topic. So with this slide, we look at the levels of measurement ranked from the least effective ways of measuring data to the most effective, beginning with nominal, then ordinal, then interval, then ratio. This concludes my presentation of levels of measurement as it applies to descriptive statistics.